the next set of emailed questions in are for Zinc 8. So, Ron, uh, these ones will be for you. The first two questions I can kind of put into one here. When could Zinc 8 start production? And does the company have enough money to the moment of production? Or will the shareholders' capital be diluted by a large margin? Well, uh, thank you for that uh, question. So the company's trajectory to market would be late 2022, 2023. Uh, that would be with our 100 kilowatt product. So the product uh, has been defined. Uh, we are currently working on a 40 kilowatt uh, build out for the Surrey house, which will be delivered by end of uh, 2020. You know, sometime in December, we'll be putting some news out on that in the next uh, little bit. Uh, so what we are looking at, however, is the market is defining itself now that <clears throat> Zinc 8 has produced the product at a cost that allows the market to, uh, to develop for long duration storage. Uh, so we're currently examining internally whether or not uh, we have a revenue uh, a product that could be produced in 2021 late quarter. That would be a 2040 kilowatt, which we're already producing. We're, we, we actually have the battery that's going to Surrey House and our back lot down on Ash Street in Vancouver. So, so we're in production. I wouldn't call it commercial production. Commercial production is scheduled for 2022, fourth quarter, first quarter, 2023. We anticipate first year of operations, 40 to 80 megawatts. We always said 40 megawatts, but we're listening to the market and we know that the market is gonna be much larger than that. And uh, that would have us between 80 and $160 million in revenue in our first year of operations. Uh, the second question is a good question. I've been thinking about this. Since the company went uh, public, <clears throat> we have raised three, four, five, six point four, just under $7 million. Uh, that is not a lot of money when you're a company that is in pre-production. Uh, we have a large, very um, qualified staff out at Ash Street, a lot of it. I think we got 12 engineers, chemical engineers, mechanical engineers, process engineers. So it, 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 it is a real business. I think totally now we've got just around 30 people that are working to get these deadlines. We have contracts. We've got two large contracts, which we've already announced, uh, one with uh, New York Power Authority, one with Digital Energy supported by NYSERDA in New York. So we have project deadlines and we're on, and we're on path to meet all of those deadlines. Uh, to get to production, it's gonna cost between 35 and $50 million. Uh, that is uh, that is what it will take to get to production. The reason I say 35 to 50 is that we're negotiating with various jurisdictions uh, who are offering us some uh, significant incentives to locate our assembly and manufacturing <clears throat> in their jurisdictions. So that could uh, that's the difference between 35 and 50. We think that's about 15 million dollars. So we are going to have to raise that money, and we're looking at uh, different ways. Some are dilutive, and some are not non dilutive and we're in active discussions and negotiations on those things. But I think the thing to focus on <clears throat> is the value of the company. We're entering into a billion dollar market. I should actually say we're entering into a trillion dollar market and we're the first ones entering that market for long duration, low cost storage. We are in discussions and negotiations with some of the largest branded companies in the world. Um, I'm not at any liberty to say who they are, but they're the largest, some of the largest branded companies in the world. We're dealing with utilities all around the globe. We're dealing with private sector partners. So we know that uh, we know what our product is. We know the performance. It'll take us another uh, couple of years of development. Uh, we're building five batteries internally next year so we can accelerate our path to uh, producing this product for the market. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna need more money and uh, we're gonna look after the interest of the shareholders and we will select um, the, uh, the best financing that we can in the interest of the shareholders. Okay, great, thanks, Ron. There's another question that just came in from Baldi. Um, have there been any updates on the agreement and principles from India and Australia? Is there any details on them? Yeah, the agreements and principles that uh, we have established working groups with both of them, and uh, they will take a little time to flesh out. One of the reasons is, I'll be quite honest, guys, I love Zoom calls, I love in-person meetings more. <clears throat> and in order to really build a relationship uh, a partnership uh, with other companies. Uh, I like to eyeball them. So that slows down a bit because we can't do that today. So there's an extra layer of caution uh, that you've got to go through. We are progressing nicely uh, with BGI. Uh, we're looking at their manufacturing capacity and 
they have, we, we have given them the specs for a number of significant parts and they are currently putting some quotes together for us. VGI is really important. VGI is, has contracts with every state utility in India and with the national utility and they're operating in 42 countries. Those that have heard me before, you know that my view is that we grow this company not by selling batteries, but by establishing pipelines of projects. So VGI certainly does that. In Australia, it is the same thing. Uh, we're going forward with pricing out um, uh, projects at the aquatic centers. There's over a hundred of them in Australia. They're getting off of uh, carbon uh, emitting generation. And so our solution is a great solution there. We're also looking at the 2040 kilowatt battery market there. It is, it, it's very extreme. So both are moving forward uh, at a good pace, uh, but we'll be cautious how we proceed with both of them.